Hello, welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. It is Tuesday, August 7th, so I took yesterday off from vlogging after the craziness that was booked through with on, because that was crazy. But I did start Throne of Glass. I am loving this book so far. Selena is so sassy. I'm here for it. I love her sass. I'm currently on page 84. Slowly but surely making my way through this. I'm not in any rush to read after Booktubeathon. I think I kind of want to slow down and take my time. Read The Assassin's Blade during Booktubeathon. I'll link up to my vlog where I read that. And I'm kind of glad that I did that book first because I feel like I have more insight into Selena's character. Like she's very almost arrogant and sassy. And I feel like if I was just starting this book, I'd be like, what is this girl like? doing like she's so arrogant blah 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 but now because i have all this understanding and insight into her character i definitely like her more than i think i would have if i was just picking this book up first yeah anyways i'll keep you guys updated with how my progress on this goes it's wednesday august 8th i read more of thorn of glass i'm currently on page 248 so i'm rolling through it i knew i was gonna like this book but i'm actually shocked at how much i like it like it is so good it just has everything that i want in a fantasy novel or i already have a lot of tabs like i am in my fields the magic was way more prevalent than i thought it was going to be i thought it was just about an assassin but it's about assassin in a world with magic which is super cool i love it i am gonna be completely addicted to the series i'm pretty sure and i'm gonna try and just like read the whole thing straight with maybe a break or two but mostly just read the whole thing straight because i love to binge series so today i have a bunch of piles of books on my floor in my room and i decided that i want to uh clean up so i'm gonna find some space for them on my bookshelves even though i'm moving in a month i think it's just easier for my life if everything all on the bookshelves and not on my floor let's get to the montage so bad because I'm in the sun out on my grandma's balcony. I went to my grandma's for a few days as a little mini vacation on the beach before I moved to Boston. So I brought all my books and I've just been reading, reading, reading on the beach. Stop. <laughs> okay, I did finish Guard of Glass and Crown of Midnight. They were both very good. I'm addicted to the Born Plus world. And this was the same way with Akatar too. Like Sarah J. Mass's books, like they just keep you reading because things are happening and you're like, what is going on? This is crazy. They're addictive. And I'm about to start Air Fire. And I know that now like the setting has changed a little bit. So like things are gonna be different than they were in the first two books. And it's just gonna get, the world's gonna get even more expansive and it's gonna be crazy. I'm literally gonna start it after I put down my camera. I can't wait. Coast Beach, and I read up to page 171 of Air of Fire. Just getting into the story, it's definitely a little bit slower paced than the other novels, but I'm liking it, and I've heard this one has a little bit more character development, which I'm here for. I plan on sitting on the beach all day reading, and then the weather wasn't cooperating, and then of course the second we go back up to the apartment, it's beautiful sun comes out and not a cloud in the sky. Well, I mean some clouds, but not like rain clouds. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna sit out on this deck and continue reading. My thoughts so far, it's 
I already have a lot of tabs, as you can see. I really like that we're going to new places and getting some new characters and storylines. There's a lot more going on. And I always love when worlds expand, so we get to go outside and hustle and meet some new people. And I'm very intrigued by all of these new characters and kind of learning their secret motives. And some characters were different than I was expecting them to be from the things I've seen online without getting into not that I've spoiled myself but I've like seen people like really love these characters and I'm like hmm something's gonna change here because I don't know what's going on so it's a little bit later I'm still reading Air of Fire and I am on page 211 I can't put this book down there's just so many things like witches that ride on broomsticks and like character development like Sarah the Masters does such a great job with developing her characters throughout the story and it makes me want to keep reading because I like just want to know how they continue to develop and in the beginning of this book like things were not you know looking good in terms of how our main character was feeling and it's just gonna be a journey through this novel and it is long and I want to read it all it's so good and I feel like I fly through these books because it's not even like I'm sitting there forcing myself to read like I just need to know what happens and something about the pacing of these novels where it's good character development but also like really action-packed scenes lots of twists and turns they're just really good Sunday. I am on page 318 of Air of Fire. I literally wanted to finish this last night and then I spent time with my family but I really had to like restrain myself from finishing it. My thoughts so far are I know that like everyone loves Rowan and but right now he seems like kind of an asshole so I hope that I end up liking him because it seems like everyone's obsessed with him. Also Abraxos is my favorite character. I love that little guy. And man man she seems like a super badass and I really like her. But yeah, this book is definitely slower than the others and focused more on character development, but I'm here for it. So I'm excited to just finish this today because I literally, I know it's a good book when I put it down, I can't stop thinking about what's gonna happen. So I'm addicted, it's fine. Hello, it is 7.30 at night now and I'm almost done. Air of Fire, look at all of these tubs. There's so many of them. I'm on page 548 and there's, I, I have a lot of feeling. Don't know if this happens to anyone, but especially when I have a lot of time to just like sit down and read through a book, like I get in this like dazed, frenzied state where I can literally like not stop thinking about a book if it's really good. And these are the types of books that really just like draw you in. And I'm a fast reader, so I stop reading if I don't have to and I'm like really into the story. But it's almost like I struggle with this thing where it's like I read so fast, I don't want to like read through them and then just speed through them and then have it be done and then have me be in like a book hangover or like, you know, sometimes I want to savor the time which world. But yeah, so if I'm in the mood to read, like I should just read and not feel bad about it for reading too quickly or too slowly or whatever. I'm just gonna finish this and start Queen of Shadows like right away. But yeah, my thoughts are so far this book. I can really see now why a lot of people say it's their favorite because there's so much character development that happens and it's a bit different of a pace from the first two. So yeah, I'm really excited for Queen of Shadows. There are some things that I have some theories on. I thought that this book was going to have more romance and I think the romance is coming in the next book and I'm a sucker for a good romance so like I'm excited to see what happens but then I read the series sooner oh okay also on that thread of like feeling bad for reading through a series quickly but it's like if I'm enjoying it this much I know that uh, I can always 
reread them when I want to and I then because I know how the story will go will probably take more time and absorb more of the story but I know that because I'm loving this series so much like it's definitely going to be something that I go back and reread. I cannot stop reading Throne of Glass. I'm breezing through these books so I finished Air Fire yesterday and then I immediately picked up Queen of Shadows. I'm currently on page 318 of 648 or something. So I just always get this way with Sarah J Mass books where something about them just pulls me in and I like cannot stop reading no matter what I do. Like I just don't want to put the book down. It's just so many things happening. It's just so action packed and it just draws you in and it's addicting. But I think one of the reasons that this series really is drawing me in is because I love those giant fantasy worlds where there's just so many different moving pieces and the world is just really expansive and like you have a whole bunch of different relationship dynamics going on whether that's like romantic friendships enemies lots of different plot lines and you get that more in adult epic fantasy but a lot of times those stories tend to have male main characters or or are mostly from the male's perspective whereas this one like the person is female like we have selena who is a woman and I think that's maybe why it resonates more with a lot of younger readers. I also feel like it has something to do with the fact that people tend to put down women a lot of times for reading YA and then kind of almost I don't know how to how to word it but I just feel like it makes fantasy maybe a little bit more accessible accessible to women that and girls that would maybe be too intimidated to pick up something like Game of Thrones or like a Brandon Sanderson book or something like that because those books tend to be targeted more towards men and these books are marketed very much towards women and girls. So I don't know but I think I just love the fact that we have this badass female character who really has like all of these emotional struggles and really grows into herself as the series, go series goes on but also just shows she isn't apologetic for who she is and just... Uh, everything about her emotional journey. Even though I don't think I'm similar to her at all, she's very like temperamental and has like a kind of like wild and volatile at times and I'm totally not like that at all. But I still find that I resonate with a lot of the things that she goes through, which I think just speaks to the power of the story. And you know, all of these characters are just fantastic, so well fleshed out and I'm just having a really, really fun time reading them. And I, this is definitely a really great time in my life to read them. I finished Queen of Shadows last night Let's take a look at this bad boy. Look at all those tabs. I definitely tab in excess, but this series just gets better and better with each book. I mean, I was not prepared for the things that happened, especially the ending of this book. Whew, blew my mind. I felt like, especially in the third book, the main character really like came into herself and now we have this book and just things are happening and I just love how immersive the fantasy is. It's crazy, man. I finished this one. I really, really loved it. Five out of five stars. I sped through this book because I was on vacation at the beach and I literally couldn't put it down. I'm like, I need to know what happens. I started Empire of Storms last night after I got home. I need to get the sticker off somehow. I'm only on page 74. It's so weird because this one is so much thinner even though it's the same length because they changed those weird thin pages. Kind of makes me sad because I want like a really thick book, you know? I'm probably not going to be able to read this one as quickly as I did Queen of Shadows because I have to go back to doing adult things and like try and move across the country in like 15 days, which is frightening. So I almost feel like I feel my pace slowing down a little bit and I don't want to devour this book as quickly because then Kingdom of Ash is coming out and uh, in October and I have to wait all that time to read it. That's my progress and uh, that's where I am so far. So I just went to check the mail and I got a book depository package. So let's open it because I know what it is and I'm so excited. What's inside? Uh, da -da. Um, ooh, who is your hashtag book bestie? To my hashtag book bestie. What is this? Do I just give this to my friend? Well, Melissa, since I don't live near you, if I did, I would give this to you. Here it is. Ah. Oh. It's so beautiful. Can you guess what it is? Oh my God. It's the Ravenclaw House Edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Oh. I'm floored. Look at those edges. 
I'm in shock. This is so beautiful. <gasps> wow. Look at Rowena Ravenclaw on the back. I mean, I guess if you can't guess, I'm a Ravenclaw. And on the front, it says wit, learning, and wisdom. Oh, I love that. <gasps> oh, this is so gorgeous. Okay, on the inside cover, it says, or yet in wise old Ravenclaw, if you've a ready mind, where those of wit and learning will always find their kind, the sorting hat. I'm just plowing on with Throne of Glass. I am probably just gonna make this a Throne of Glass reading vlog since by the time Sunday rolls around, I'm assuming I will have read all of Throne of Glass. I'm currently on page 390 of Empire of Storms. So I'm about halfway through, I think more than halfway through. I mean, everything is just so good. Okay, first of all, there's like 10,000 new ships. Like all of these characters are shacking up and now there's all these new relationships to obsess over. Like she really packed a punch with this one. And just the things that have happened, I'm shook. So this series really has my heart and I'm really intrigued by the fact that Tower of Dawn is like a 600 page book about Kale. Really interested to see like what Kale is up to that can occupy like 600 pages of literature. There's the sleeping puppy. Do you wanna play? Hi. <laughs> Get that back. You're running from me. crying you want to sound like the ball bye um so i finished empire storms last night what <laughs> just like what what <laughs> i i'm speechless like what just happened Oh my god, and this book came out in 2016, and I know Tower of Dawn is like parallel to this, so like you people that have been like on the Throne of Glass trains since the beginning, I've had to wait two years. I don't think I can wait two months for Kingdom of Ash. I, I can't even like form words about like the emotional impact of this book at the end had on me. Like I rarely cry like I rarely shed a tear for anything in like books movies tv whatever like I don't cry but that's not to say that I don't feel because I do get very emotional it's just like crying isn't my body's natural response this book moved me to tears I was crying I don't cry I was crying I was like oh my god what is happening like I have never read a book ending that had my heart in so many pieces than this book did like what and you want to know what i was spoiled for the end of this i know how this book ends because i accidentally read the description for kingdom of ash like eons ago when i thought i wasn't gonna ever read the series not that i thought i wasn't gonna ever read the series but i'm gonna be like oh yeah i, I would forget it in the future no i so i fucking knew how this was gonna end and yet i still bawling like i did not expect the emotional impact that this book had on me and just all the characters like what even is occurring? I don't know, but look at all these tabs that I have. Like, I, but at least Kingdom of Ash is a thousand pages long. Like, just what? Like what? Like I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with myself. It's just so epic in scope and really immersive, and just the characters and like what occurs. Like, I'm speechless. That's just how it it rolls you know okay so i did start tower of dawn i started this morning i'm on page uh, 27 so i haven't really gotten that far i never really like hated kale i wouldn't say he was ever like my favorite and i really wasn't on booktube when this book came out and i haven't watched many tower of dawn videos so i don't really know what the general reaction of the book community was to this installment in the series so we'll see how it goes I don't know what I'm gonna do when I finish this book, but I, you know, need to read this. I've gotten this far. I'm reading the last book in this series that is out so far, and then I'm gonna crawl into a hole until October 23rd.
I forgot to mention that they should really have called this book Empire of New Ships because there's like 10,000 new relationships occurring in this book and I love them all and I just need everyone to be okay but in the description for Kingdom of Ash it seems like some couples are not going to make it. I don't know what's going to happen. I just... I was really surprised by some of the relationships that were formed in this book. I didn't necessarily see them come in but I enjoyed them. Um, uh, one character that I really, really grew to love in this book is Alide. I saw someone describe her on like the internet somewhere as a Slytherin queen, and yes, I'm here from that description. She definitely is a Slytherin queen, and I mean, while I myself am not a Slytherin, I can respect the Slytherin queen Alide because that girl is a keen observer, and even though she is has a limp and is you know tread upon her whole life. She uses this thing to her advantage because she's smart as hell, so you go Alide. Yesterday I went to Barnes & Noble and while I was there I was like, I know I need to pick this up. And that is To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han because the movie just came out today and as soon as I finished Tower of Dawn, you bet I'm starting this and watching the movie. And then when I was there, I was browsing around the Funko Pop section and I found a Ginny Weasley Funko Pop. I've never seen one of these before, so I was like, Ginny's my girl, I'm picking this up. Oh my god, she's so cool. Red, is this supposed to be Tom Riddle's diary that she's writing in? Okay, focus on Jenny. She's the focus here. Oh, she's so cool. Look at that red hair. Yeah, I have been meaning to expand my Funko Pop collection, so I'm really excited that I saw Jenny and now I can add her to the collection and I want to get more and more Harry Potter ones because I need them in my life. Hello, welcome back. It is now later on in the day, but I got a haircut. And I feel like the hairstylist really did some cool stuff with my hair. It looks cool in the back. I don't know. There you go. So fun. Got some book mail. Got two packages. Very exciting. So let's unbox them. First one is from Book Depository. And I know what this is because I only have one thing that I'm awaiting from there. Ah! Oh my god. Whoa, this blue is absolutely stunning. Like if you thought the first Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone was beautiful, whew, wow, I'm just so shook by how beautiful this is. This one says, relish great Ravenclaw moments, moaning Myrtle haunting the girls' bathroom, Lockhart's freshly clawed Cornish pixies and enjoy exciting adventures and illustrations that celebrate the noble characters of Ravenclaw home. Here is Rowena Ravenclaw. The Ravenclaw common room. Oh, I love that. I would love to study in a place like that, to be honest. Now let's get on to my next mystery package. Where could it be from? What kind of book could it be? Well, you will find out the answers in a second when I open it. It is not quite a reading book but in agenda it's so pretty free stickers with my order very cool hi everyone it is now monday august 20th and as of last night i finished tower of dawn aka i finished all throne class so far wow <laughs> like wow i finished i read this whole series in like about two weeks and it's been a whirlwind <laughs> um my specific thoughts on tower of dawn going into this book i really wasn't sure how i was going to feel about it because Kale was like someone that I liked and then I was like eh I don't know he kind of like lost himself throughout the series and then this book just gave him a really really good character arc and I feel like all the things that he went through like made sense to come to this point. I loved the new characters and the new setting because it was actually had a little bit of a different tone from the rest of the books but yet it's still it it's very interesting for an author to take one of the last books in the series and have it be set in this like new place following a different main character and have it have like a, just like a whole different kind of tone. I did find that it moved a little bit slower than the other books kind of in the middle but then it picked up pace again. The best thing about this book I think is really just like the emotional journey that these characters go through which I also think that that's where Sarah J Mess's like writing shines the most is when she's writing about the emotional arcs that these characters are going through in these like dire fantastical situations so yeah I, I thought it was just really like sweet and touching at some points i was not expecting that and i was pleasantly surprised and i really liked the character of I irene i think it's just pronounced like irene um i loved her character and i liked that she was such a contrast to 
Aelin because she's all about, she's like this very like sweet and she's a healer. So she's like very sweet and kind and compassionate and patient, but yet she like still has this strength about her. So I really think that that's cool to showcase woman characters that have a whole bunch of like different personality traits and especially someone like a healer that's I guess maybe something like a nurse is seen as more of a traditional female role but like ha still having strength in those characters and showing how they can be like strong in these like really you know these situations that are like insane there were some twists in here that you definitely need to read this before the last one because there is some vital information that changes the game and just whew, now i'm done with third and glass I'm like what, what am i gonna do until october 23rd like i need kingdom of ash right now so it, it was really fun i really enjoyed the experience of being able to vlog myself reading this whole series over the two weeks and it's gonna be fun when i go back to edit the footage and like see what i thought about the series in the beginning and then like how it kind of unfolded i also really liked that i was tabbing and taking notes throughout the entire thing because i just i realized just flipping back through these books that i've tabbed and just like seeing the places that i've marked one it makes it really easy to find the places that you would maybe want to reread for important information but also like it really just feels like you're leaving a mark on the book and like you it kind of just shows like your personal reading experience and i really like that touch of personalization on the books because these are my books like it's not like i'm gonna give them away anytime soon they're not library books so i may as well put a little bit of myself into them and i really enjoy the experience of reading the series straight through i love to read series straight through i know some people like to take breaks in between books but i binge read series so it's just really great my overall thoughts on the series are i get why everyone's obsessed i'm now obsessed i love the series so much it just had everything that i wanted in a fantasy series like a really strong woman main character wide array of personalities and characters and all of these like really good world building and like a lot of different events are happening and i love how the story slowly unfolded and became just like the scope increased book by book and it was just paced the whole thing like each book was paced really well but like the series arc as a whole is also paced really well so i get it I know why everyone loves the series. I'm hopping on the bandwagon. I love the series now too. That is that for this reading vlog. Ugh. So have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.